What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the G-Red Show. I'm G-Red. So, honestly, I I kind of feel like an idiot. I don't know how I didn't think things through because I always try and analyze every single situation. But the more I think about this Donnie Olmo transfer, the more and more worried I am for not the club. I mean, yes, the club, but for the board and their decision-making moving forward. Does this make sense? Because I honestly forgot until just yesterday. Fermin Lopez, they're basically, they're not the same player, but... For Barcelona, they will play the same positions. Left wing, cam, center midfielder. Does this make sense when you have someone five years younger in Fermin Lopez who has proven in a very short amount of time how talented he is and how he will be incredibly impactful in Barcelona's attack? So we're going to discuss this. Does this make sense for Barcelona and why I think this could really hinder the board of Barcelona, their decision-making, and going after a specific position. But before we jump in, guys, I've been getting a lot of requests lately about trying to collaborate with some other content creators and Barcelona creators. We potentially might have some really cool stuff in the works moving forward, so stay tuned for that. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I'm trying to push for 10,000 subscribers. I hate being one of those annoying content creators that's asking you to do this, but if you can do it, I appreciate it, and I actually genuinely am appreciative of everyone that tunes in watches like comments subscribes i try to engage with you guys as much as i can and i truly am grateful for every one of you so thank you for that now without further ado let's discuss this whole situation uh regarding barcelona so donny almo we'll touch on him first We'll touch on Fermi in second. And then three, what's going to happen with Barcelona and where is this going to impact them? So, number one, Dani Almo. You, you can't second guess his talent. You you can't. I mean, watching just watch his highlights. And I know everyone looks better in their highlights, but just watch it. Some of the stuff he does, like, honestly, like, just watching the Euros, you would think he's one of the best players in the world. And I know it's kind of like a crazy statement, but it's also not. Barcelona Academy player. You know, right off the bat, extremely talented and gifted. He's going to make an immediate impact. I truly think he is. He's 26. He's played at the top in the international for Spain. You know, both Euros, he was great. I don't really remember him in the last World Cup, weirdly. He, he's good at Leipzig. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not a world-class team, so obviously he's not going to be competing for, like, making a deep run in the Champions League consistently or winning the Bundesliga, but the talent's there, and he's going to provide a ton of attacking support, which is great. The fear I have is... It's not even the money, but he's 26, which that's not even the reason either. It's signing him until 2030, and due to the nature of the business Barcelona does, and I feel like how the board thinks, this could limit their abilities for looking for other players because they obviously see him in their long-term plans. For six, for six years, he's going to come in. If you're spending that money and lock him into a long-term contract at 26, he's going to be a starter. I feel like he's for sure going to be a starter. You don't bring in someone like that to come off the bench. And yes, there's going to be a rotation, but I think consistently we'll probably see him starting for Barcelona. Now, Fermin, you know, I think five years younger, they're not the same player, but they play the same position and they are, at times, they resemble each other. I think Olmo, obviously more experienced, he's more crafty. He's a little more like, he's going to create a little more out of nothing. He's going to be a little more in like tight spaces. He's going to be more successful. But again, he's a lot older and a lot more experienced at the big stage where Fermin is just bursting on the stage, right? You can't really discredit anything from Fermin Lopez. He hasn't been given that real opportunity, but he scored six goals in the Olympics, won the gold medal, provided an assist, easily one of their best players. And he was great when he came on for Barcelona last year. And he was the one midfielder that they have that would, he would make it a point to attack and shoot. How many times do players, not just for Barcelona, I see it so often. Players in a position to shoot, and instead of just shooting the ball, they try and take an extra touch, they try and do something fancy and do some skill move, or they try and do like Cancelo does all the time, a Travella, or they'll try and pass it. Just shoot the ball, because if you shoot the ball, one, you could score, you could hit the post, the keeper could make a save, rebound, deflection. Just shoot the ball, and Fermin Lopez is not afraid to do that. And again, I think having both of them is good. Is this going to limit... Fermin's ability to play because, you know, neither of them are defensive player. And due to the nature of the lack of defensive signings, or literally no signings defensively, Frankie de Jong and Christensen will probably be the two holding midfielders that we can see consistently. Gundogan will probably be paired up next to one of them as well, like we saw last season, which I hate because 
He's not a good defensive player. And if there's not a good defensive player next to Gundogan, he does not look good. He's an attacking, more attacking midfielder. But I do think Marcus Sado and Mark Bernal will be rotated into the squad very, very quickly, which could be good. Oh, to be honest, the main problem I see with the Dani Olmo signing is the way that I think Barcelona, their board operates and how they think, right? They're going to see Dani Olmo and Fermin Lopez and think, hmm, we have two midfielders or you know, attacking type of players that can play as a center midfielder, as a camp, and a left winger. But we also have Rafinha and Ferran Torres, and even Vitor Roque and Paul Victor can play on the wings too. Wow, we have so much depth for this left wing position. But the problem I have with this is none of them are true all and out left wingers besides Ferran Torres. But, you know, like, let's just be honest. He, he needs to go. And I don't want to even talk about this because this has nothing to do with the video. But I, I fear that they're going to see this, and especially with Dani Almo, who I guarantee you plays a ton at that left wing spot this season, and be like, yeah, we don't need to find a left winger. We're fine with where we're at. And no, you need a true left winger. Who is the long-term successor to Neymar? I get it. You're never going to find the next Neymar. It's, it's impossible. Who is that next left winger who is young, quick, skilled, fast? Because you blew it right now with Nico, and it's not happening. So is it Nico next season? Because I don't even think they try and pursue anybody due to the way they conduct business. I think they're going to think we're too, we have too many options, so we don't need to find a left winger. But in my eyes, you need a real left winger because, yeah, Gavi can play there, Pedri can play there, Fermin can play there, but that's not their best and most productive position. They're all midfielders. That's the problem that I have with the Donny Olmo signing. It's, it's not even the money. It's not his age. I thought at first maybe it takes away from Fermin, but... I don't think so, especially with Gavi and Pedri. I don't think either of them are going to be starting the season. I think Gavi probably won't even play or touch the field until October, November. And even then, it's going to be very, very... He'll come on for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, just ease his way into it. And then Pedri, we just can't count on right now. So Fermin's going to get a lot of looks, but you know none of them are left wingers. So bringing in Dani Olmo, I fear they're going to use him a ton in that position. And they're going to think, yeah... We have Dani Almo. We don't need anybody else. We have him until 2030. We'll just wait six years to find the next up-and-coming winger. So that's my biggest concern, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope they still can go out and find a winger, whether that's Nico Williams or the next big thing, because Jeremy Doku is at Man City. Vinicius, Rodrigo, Mbappe, they're all at Real Madrid. Phil Foden is at Man City. I mean, all these very, very good young wingers are already at these other clubs, so... That's Barcelona's main priority because I think Casado and Bernal are going to be the successors to Busquets. And Barcelona in two years will be fine in that holding midfielding role. It's the left winger and who is the Lewandowski long-term replacement. Those are my biggest concerns, to be completely honest. So let me know what you guys think about this. Do you have the same concerns as me? Do you think that Barcelona might, you know, just think, eh, we don't need to find a left winger because we have Dani Olmo and a ton of other versatile players that can play there. Do you think this could hurt Barcelona in that aspect? And then what are your expectations of Fermin Lopez and Dani Olmo this season? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And if you guys made it this far, I appreciate you guys sticking around. And I hope to see you guys back here next time on the G-Red Show.